issue that you're trying to address with this round table? Well, we know our demographics demand uh, a policy response um, that is bold, that really addresses our demographics, how it impacts our economy. So the hope is getting folks around the table to really re-envision how we approach aging in Maine as it relates to our economy so that we can plan not just for now, the crisis that we're dealing with now, but also the future. What is the crisis that we're dealing with now? Our aging population. So we're, Maine is getting older and we're getting older quickly. So we need to address that. And there are a number of solutions we started to hear this morning about what some of those solutions might look like. But if we ignore uh, our demographics, it's not getting better. We really need to come up with a policy solution for the state of Maine. And today's conversation starts to really begin uh, thinking about that. Are you looking to have actual policy idea bills to introduce in January? That is the hope. I mean, this is a long-term project, clearly, but our hope is that we can start introducing uh, pieces of legislation policy that really leads towards addressing uh, our demographics, and that is an aging Maine, where we need to do more to put a spotlight on what we know is a, is a problem that is facing us now and it's not going to get any better in the future. that you'd like to see right away, I guess. Well, I think the housing and the transportation were highlighted this morning. I think uh, the, the longer term is how to get more people to move here uh, to Maine. That is a challenge. Uh, I moved here to Maine for very specific reasons. I think as our aging population becomes older, there might be an opportunity uh, for people to move to Maine for the same reasons. But again, this is really a, a short-term and long-term planning process. Uh, but I think the interest in the group, uh, the people around the table, uh, I think that there is, this is a tipping point for Maine. Everybody has a stake in this, whether you're in business or a family member or a health care provider. Everybody recognizes uh, the reality of our demographics, and that's why I think there's so much interest uh, to do something here in the state. This is how the approach is changing. You said that you know, this has obviously been an issue in Maine for a while, but you want to do something different. I think uh, our demographics are, are driving that, uh, and I think that the older that we do get, uh, the more apparent it becomes that we need to do something. And I think timing is everything, and I think that now is the time. You can't talk to somebody on the street or in their home or at the coffee shop without this being a relevant issue to everybody. We were saying before that it was mostly, you know, it was state agencies that were trying to address this issue, and now you want to change that. So what, can you just describe that a little bit? Sure. So we have invited folks to the table, um, business leaders, our universities and colleges, um, to really start re-envisioning uh, what it means to address aging in the state of Maine. So in the past, we have put a, a large burden on our state agencies, on our provider network to solve this very serious problem. And what we're doing now is bringing people to the table that traditionally haven't been there, but they are certainly impacted by our demographics. Speaker, you heard Professor Colgan near the end there said something to the effect of this kind of change on a national level is going to challenge our organizations and our uh, society to do things that in American history have been basically impossible and not, and not happen. Uh, do you agree with that? What's your reaction? And also, what will Maine look like in 30 years if we do nothing about this problem? Well, if we do nothing, uh, as uh, Charles Colgan said, our labor costs are going to be uh, uh, very high relative to the rest of the country. We're going to have to pay more to recruit people here to fill those jobs that are going to be void from our aging uh, population. I do think it's possible. I wouldn't be at the table now uh, if I didn't think it was possible to do something meaningful to really address um, what is before us. Um, I think that we have uh, a number of people at the table that are innovative thinkers. We really need to kind of blow up the model that we currently have, rethink about how we uh, approach aging uh, here in the state of Maine. So I do think it's possible. I think it's extremely challenging, but it's, it, again, it's an imperative that we address uh, this issue um, on, a, on a state level, on a local level, um, and really be a model for the rest of the country, and as Charles Colgan said, for the world. You said in a press release that Maine could be a national leader in this, uh, other than the fact we have the oldest per capita population in your own ambitions. What, what makes you think that that's, the Maine could actually be a leader and all the other challenges that we have. Well, again, I think timing is everything and the interest is there. We have business leaders, um, in individuals from our university and community college system um, that really understand what is at stake here. And to do nothing is no longer a, a, a solution. We can't uh, continue to support the status quo. I really do think that there's an appetite here to do something very meaningful, uh, very big, and again, uh, have a new vision for what it means to approach aging in the state of Maine.